Good morning. <coughs> Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We, are, we gather today to give thanks to God for coming among us as mercy incarnate as we will hear from the scripture that Jesus is mercy incarnate let us bring ourselves to surrender ourselves to the grace and mercy of this kind and generous God you were sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord have mercy Lord have mercy you came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, Grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemns Hosanna to death. The Hosanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they, are, that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel? to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence. Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. And he replied, Separate these two four from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from another, he called one of them and said, how, have, how you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, Tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, Beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel. And in their fear, they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Dan replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, 
so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they afflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are on my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are on my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are on my side. I take no pleasure in the death of a wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes of the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the mill. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last night, um, Dr. Anthony or Tony Fauci and President Trump gave 
a very grim picture of how long we will be in lockdown or shutdown in the country. So somehow we need to be prepared for another month. I don't know how I'm going to do it. The only strength I have is from the grace, from the blessings of the prayers and wishes and support of you, the parishioners. And we received many letters and emails and greetings um, from Father Biden and I, and we are indeed grateful. And I think we all hold each other at this time. You have heard enough about the COVID-19. Let's now turn to the scripture um, that we have this morning. I can't um, but to think about uh, this story that was told when Jesus said, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And from the crowd comes a stone all the way from the back, right at the woman, and Jesus catches that stone and tells his mother, Mary, Mom, I was trying to make a point. I'm sure you heard that story before. Because Mary is conceived without sin. If there was one who was, um, you know, without sin, who could stone this woman uh, to um, death, who is caught in the act of adultery, <clears throat> it could be Blessed Mother. But, if, but that's simply a story. Because the mother of the mercy incarnate can never do that. Because she is the mother of mercy. And so let's get into that uh, mercy. Now, let's go back to the first reading from <clears throat> Prophet Daniel. A beautiful story about this beautiful woman, Susanna, who, who, who is, um, um, Susanna is the, uh, the, the husband of uh, Joachim, you know, and he was a just man. And Susanna was a God-fearing woman, the daughter of Hilkeia, you know. And they were, you know, they were well respected in the Jewish community. And these two judges, um, you know, two judges um, in, in normal uh, language, we would say, we would call them dirty old men, you know, these two judges. Uh, they were lusting after these uh, the, uh, Susanna when she was in the garden and when she was walking and then finally decided to take a bath and then they catch her and uh, you know and then she refuses to um, submit and they uh, pull out a story and create the story that uh, she was found um, having uh, you know you know, um, having an affair with this man in the garden. And uh, eventually the story is, of course, um, their plot is, um, was um, revealed to be fake. And when they were asked the question, Daniel, the young man said, and I, don't, I don't want to do anything to do with this um, innocent woman. And then finally, he becomes a judge. You know, the accusers become the accused in this story. They are caught now in the act of committing perjury. Uh, because when they asked, uh, when Daniel asked the question, um, they said, one said, oh, I found her under the oak tree. And the other one said, oh, I found her under, um, what is the other tree again? Um, oh, mastic tree, under a mastic tree. To, so their stories don't corroborate, you know, they don't connect. So they were caught in the act of perjury. You know, 
So the innocent woman is spared through the uh, um, intervention of Prophet Daniel. You know, God does not want to see an innocent punished and the just punished, but only the wicked. Now, when we come to the um, gospel, what do we see? This woman, for sure, she's caught in the act of committing um, adultery. So she stands before Jesus uh, with her head bowed down because she knows that she's guilty. She knows her sin. She has no argument before Jesus nor the people. And she's ready to face her um, fortune, you know, grim fortune for sure. She's um, caught. She is, um, it, she's like uh, standing um, on a railroad track that is surrounded by two thick walls. And the train is coming at you. And um, there is no way that you can escape. And you got to face the grim um, situation. And yet, what do we see? Because she's not only in, uh, she's caught by the scribes and the Pharisees, but she's brought before Jesus. Jesus, the just judge. You know, just judge. Who does not want to see, uh, you know, the wicked punished, but someone who will convert? That would, that's what we saw in the uh, you know the, um, in the responsorial psalm. You no, know, that that the wicked may turn uh, their, his or her life around, and that they may find a new life. So, according to Saint Augustine, the great misery meets the great mercy. That's how he defines this particular scene of uh, the um, unnamed woman caught in adultery before Jesus. Great misery, uh, representing the misery this woman has experienced in her life. You know, a woman uh, who goes into this uh, situation, uh, maybe there are so many reasons, we don't know the circumstances, but the matter of the fact is that she is full of misery. She is guilty and she has no way to go. There is no future for her. Unless, unless uh, this great mercy will show some mercy. You know, one of the beautiful definitions of mercy that is given by Father James Keen, Keen um, James Kinn, in uh, a Jesuit priest from Boston College, uh, you know, is this. M mercy means willingness to step into the misery or chaos of another. You know, the willingness to step into the misery or the chaos of another. And who is the most qualified to do that if not Jesus himself? He steps into the um, miserable situation of this woman and when no one is uh, standing up for her, Jesus stands up for her. Not that Jesus is declaring her innocent, but that um, Jesus, what does Jesus do? He, you know, he's writing something um, in the sand, you know. So someone said, Jesus is doodling in the sand. Doodling, which means Jesus is scribbling something in the sand. What is Jesus scribbling anyway? It could be her sins. It could be many, her many sins. And I think, I want to believe that Jesus is writing her sins in the sand. Why? Precisely because God, um, you know, if you go back to the uh, reading from the prophet Micah, what do we see? That when God is willing to overlook our sins, and God is willing to cast our sins into the depths of the ocean, what does that mean? God is 
um, inter interested more in the conversion of sinners. And that is what we see all over the New Testament when Jesus had come the sinners, how he rejoices, uh, rejoices at the conversion of the sinner. You know, and Jesus tells her, after noticing that no one has cast a stone at her, tells her, has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she says, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. What a beautiful um, encounter of the mercy incarnate with the misery before him. The misery meets the mercy. A person who is caught in the miserable act of sin is caught by Jesus with his mercy and with mercy there is redemption, there is hope and there is a new life. I think we are all caught off guard for sure by this misery of the COVID-19. But you know what? The greatest, greatest consolation that I have and you all have is simply is that we are caught by the great mercy of Jesus. And he will show mercy to us. And that is the hope. That is the message of love that we have from the scripture today. Let us take that message of hope into our heart that Jesus is here to show his mercy, not to condemn, not to judge, but to give us life and life in its abundance. Amen. Let us now bring to God our prayers and our petitions for Pope Francis and all clergy and religious. May God's hope shine abundantly through them as they leave the church in the world in these situations today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are elected to government positions, may God's justice be in their hearts as they Make decisions in the best interests of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who thirst for light in situations of great darkness, especially those afflicted with this coronavirus, may God's love lead them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our faith community, wherever that you are gathered at this time, may the Lord help us to always grow in faith, hope, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, and for the intentions of this man, may God's peace be with them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At the conclusion of this prayer, from now on, we would pray this very special prayer that was uh, written by Pope Francis for the healing of the world from the coronavirus. O oh Mary, you shine continuously along our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entreat ourselves to you. Help of the sick who at the cross were near to the pain of Jesus, keeping you faith, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people and of the world, know what we need, and we trust that you will provide for those who, those needs so that at the Cana of Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and took upon our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. 
We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas. We who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human ends. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God, for creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of a human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. this pass, I want to especially remember Nick, who is one of the RCIA candidates that we have from the parish who is suffering from COVID-19 and is hospitalized, uh, and also for his uh, wife uh, Sandra and the whole family at this time, and anyone who may be suffering from this and any other disease from our parish, and I want to remember all of them at this pass. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Put the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance, a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, I mean the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son, I mean the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Joel and Nell our bishops, and Archbishop elect Gregory, and all the clergy, and all the religious, and all those people, parishioners, families who are at home at this time. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and especially Saint Oliver, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be couriers to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Bringing ourselves to God the Father, who is the Father of mercy and compassion, we pray that very special prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed help and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, will and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Amen. All of you who are at home and who cannot receive Jesus at this time, I'm praying this prayer for all of you. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at peace spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you from now on. Sin no more. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ hasten our steps to, up toward you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray. The people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You have a safe day.